Welcome to the training video for the ADM Mindwinder ride. In this video, we will show you how to set up, operate, and tear down a Mindwinder swing. When you first get your ride, you'll notice that the power cord comes with bare pigtails like shown here. It is recommended to use 50 amp service only to operate the ride. You can use many different types of 50 amp plugs. Shown here is the most common 50 amp outlet on the large towable generators, which is a four pin twist lock connection. After placing the ride on a semi-flat surface and disconnecting the truck, take the fencing off the fence racks. After removing the fence, use the leveling jacks to level the frame of the trailer. Before you start cranking the jacks, make sure to remove the pin and slide the foot down as far as you can. All four leveling jacks do not need to be on the same hole. Crank the front jacks first and then move to the back. Lift the frame of the ride up so that the tires are off the ground and they can spin freely. After the tires are off the ground, use a level to make sure the ride is mostly level. Next, disconnect the ride vehicle from the transport bracket and lower them into position. Before lowering the tubs, we recommend using pool noodles on the edge of the tub to prevent damage to the tubs while setting up the attraction. Removing the ride vehicles from the transport position is best done with two people. While one person is holding the ride vehicle, the other person will remove the R-pin from the clevis pin that holds the tub onto the transport bracket. Hold off on removing the center and one of the outside ride vehicles near the hitch tongue so that the hitch can be removed easier. Before removing the tongue of the ride, you'll need to disconnect the torque rods. The torque rods connect the front of the trailer to the near front of the tongue. Loosen the turnbuckle side first, remove the R-pins, and then slide the torque rods out of their transport position. Next, crank the jack up just enough to swivel it into the transport position. After swiveling the jack, disconnect the emergency breakaway cable and remove the cable from the tongue. Coil up the trailer electric cable and put it on the base of the ride or below the trailer frame. After removing the electric, you can now remove the hitch tongue. Remove the clevis pin that holds the hitch tongue onto the ride frame and, with two people, pull the tongue out and remove it from the vicinity of the ride. Throughout the process of setting up and tearing down this attraction, it is incredibly important to put back any R pins or clevis pins where they belong so they do not get lost. It is also recommended to carry extra pins on the ride just in case pins get lost or damaged. Next, remove the ride vehicle transport brackets. Do this by loosening the bolt and removing the clevis pin. Completely pull out the transport brackets and then put them aside. Repeat the step for all of the transport brackets. Only after the ride vehicles are out of the transport position should you put down the outrigger legs. It is recommended, once again, to use two people for this step as the legs can be very heavy. Have one person on the wheel well removing the pin from the outrigger leg and the other on the ground lowering it down. Although it does not come with a ride, we recommend that you use wooden blocks below the feet of the outrigger legs, especially if the ride is on a soft or grassy surface. Once the outrigger legs are down, you'll need to connect them to the frame of the trailer. On the passenger side of the ride, there is an equipment storage bin with bars for your outrigger legs. There will be four turnbuckle bars and four rigid bars. To install these bars, first connect the rigid bar to the leg and the frame of the trailer, then connect the turnbuckle bar. Once both are connected and secured with the R-pins, tighten the turnbuckle to pull inwards, not pushed apart. Tighten the turnbuckle so that it is snug. No need to tighten this down with much force. After all eight bars have been installed, it is time to lower the frame of the ride to put the weight on the outrigger legs. Crank the leveling jacks counterclockwise so that the weight is lifted off of them. Once the pressure is 100% on the outrigger legs, apply one or two cranks of pressure clockwise back on the leveling jacks. Do this for all four leveling jacks. Next, we need to put the platform up so that we can assemble the sweeps. On the driver's side of the trailer, there will be two bars mounted and pinned in place. These bars hold the platform. Remove the bars and place them in the pegs to the left and right of the license plate holder. Once again, using two people, lift the platform up and place it on the platform support bars. 
In order to reach the end of the sweep arms, you'll need to extend the telescoping platform. Do this by removing the bolts at the end of the platform and simply push the platform out. Make sure you do not extend the telescoping platform too far so that it does not hit the ride vehicle arms. On the platform, the first thing you'll need to do is remove the center hub transport bar. The transport bar connects the spinning part of the center hub to the frame of the ride. You'll need two wrenches to complete this task. Simply loosen the nut and bolt and remove them from their current position. Pivot the bar away from the center hub and replace the bolt, washers, and nut on the transport bar. Make sure the nut is hand tightened and on the bottom of the transport bar not to interfere with the ride sweep arms in operation. Next, you'll need to flip the light bars for the crown into place and secure them using the pin. Once the three or four light bars are up, depending on the model that you have, free the sweeps from the upper sweep transport bars. There are two to three bars per side, again, depending on what model you own. Next, spread the sweep arms out and connect them with the spreader bars. Repeat this step for the other one or two sweep arms on the side. Once the first side of the sweep arms is complete, rotate the center hub manually to start working on the other side. Repeat the last steps of flipping up the crown light bars, removing the transport bars, and connecting the sweep arms together with the spreader bars. Once the second set of sweep arms is complete, we now need to connect the last two spreader bars and the aircraft cables with the turnbuckles. Swivel and secure the spreader bar first, then connect the aircraft cable with the turnbuckle, but do not tighten it down. If you tighten it down before attaching the other side, you will have a hard time or not be able to install the last spreader bar. Swivel the center hub manually 180 degrees to access the last spreader bar and aircraft cable. Install the spreader bar first and then install the aircraft cable with the turnbuckle. Once all spreader bars and aircraft cables have been installed, tighten the turnbuckle on the aircraft cable closest to you. Once finished, rotate the hub to the next turnbuckle and tighten that one. If needed, use a crescent wrench or screwdriver to help tighten the turnbuckle. After a visual inspection of the upper area of the attraction, the installer can get down, push the platform in, and pin it in place. Then put the platform down to its transport position, again using two people. Put the platform bars back where they belong and pin it into place. There are two types of control options for the Mindwinder. This specific ride has an outside control panel, but there are also inside control panel options available. Remove the control console from the base of the ride and put it into a safe position at the exterior perimeter of the ride, but within the fencing limits. Connect the control cable from the electrical box in the base of the ride to the control console. At this point, or at any point before this, connect power to the ride. Besides putting the fence up around the perimeter of the ride, the Mindwinder is ready to operate. Open up the electrical box at the base of the ride using a screwdriver, flip on all of the breakers one by one, and close and secure the electrical box. After a safety check and a ride inspection, it is time to start the ride. On the side of the control console, you will see a red emergency stop button along with a pair of buttons, one red and the other green. The emergency stop button cuts all motor power to the ride. In order to release this, twist the button in the direction of the arrows and allow it to pop up. This disengages the emergency stop. Next, you have the green button which starts the motor and the red button which turns off the motor. To start the ride, make sure the emergency stop button is released and the motor is on. Open the control console using a screwdriver to reveal the controls. To spin the ride, turn the on slash off switch on and then slowly turn the dial. Turn the dial until you've reached the desired speed with the maximum speed being 100%. To stop the attraction, simply turn the switch off and turn the dial to zero. You do not need to turn the motor off in between rides. Now that you've learned how to fully set up and operate the ride, it's time to tear down the ride and prepare it for transport. First, turn the switch for the control off, then turn the motor off and press the emergency stop button. 
Lock the control panel box once again using a flathead screwdriver or something similar. Next, go to the electrical box on the base of the ride and turn off all of the circuit breakers. Secure the electrical box closed for transport and disconnect power. Next, disconnect the control cable from both the ride frame and the control console and coil up the cable. Next, lift the platform back into place and slide it out. Again, use two people for this step as the platform is very heavy. Climb up to the top and start with loosening and removing the two turnbuckle aircraft cables. You must loosen at least one of these before starting on the spreader bars. Once the turnbuckles are removed, completely tighten them for transport, otherwise they may fall out while going down the road. Continue moving from one sweep arm to another, swiveling the spreader bar back into the transport position and eventually remove the other aircraft cable with the turnbuckle. Once you have a group of sweep arms disconnected from the spreader bars, pull them in together and secure the top of the sweep arms with the transport brackets. At this point, or at any point while disassembling the sweep arms, fold down the crown light bars and secure them into place. Once the first set of sweep arms is complete, move to the second set of sweep arms and repeat all of the previous steps. The last task that needs to be accomplished on the platform is to secure the central hub with the transport bar. Remove the nut, washers, and bolt from the transport bar and swivel the bar into the general area of where it needs to be secured. Slowly spin the hub manually until the hole in the central hub and the transport bar align. Secure the bolt tightly using two crescent wrenches. This step ensures smoother transport and is also crucial to the longevity of your ride. Once everything on the platform is completed, push the telescoping platform in, replace the bolts, tighten them down, and slowly swing the platform down to the transport position. At any point during the teardown and before the fencing is put on, put the control console back in the base of the trailer and secure it using the bungee cords for transport. The next step is to disconnect the outrigger legs and place them in the transport position. In order to disconnect them, you'll need to use the leveling jacks to lift up the frame of the trailer. After you've lifted up the frame of the trailer, remove the turnbuckle bar first, followed by the rigid bar. Do this for all four of the outrigger legs. Once the bars have been removed, pivot the outrigger legs upwards to the transport position and secure them using permanently mounted pins. Next, reinstall the transport brackets for the ride vehicle. Make sure that the number of welded dots match up with the according seat number. Using two people, push the seats onto the transport racks and pin them into place. Repeat this step for the three back tubs and only two of the front tubs. Before installing the last ride vehicle, install the hitch tongue, pin it in place, run the electrical cable, and connect the emergency breakaway cable. It's also easier to install the torque rods before installing the last ride vehicle. First, start with the rigid torque rod, then the turnbuckle torque rod. Once the pins are in place, tighten the turnbuckle torque rod. Swivel the jack down and pin it into place. Finally, install the last ride vehicle and pin that in place. Next, raise all of the leveling jacks on all four corners of the ride. Make sure to raise the jack foot sleeve and pin it into the highest position possible. Lastly, reinstall the fencing on the fence racks of the ride and secure them for transport using a ratchet strap. Thanks for watching this training video of the ADM Mindwinder.